Hi everyone, it's great to be with you today. Thank you for joining me. This is session seven in our confirmation program and it's entitled Doing the Right Thing. And so in this session, I'm going to explore with you some of God's rules and guidelines that he's given us for our lives. And as we're kind of going through this video and the next one, I'd really invite you to bear in mind that God gives us these rules because he loves us and because he wants the best for us and the people around us. So let's take a bit of a closer look at what we're going to cover. So God gives us rules and guidelines to help us do the right thing. In this session, we'll look at some of the most important of those rules. Crucially, we will also explore why God gives us these rules and why he wants us to do the right thing. I think doing the right thing is probably one of the most important sessions on this course. And this slide shows some of the key ideas that it relates to. As you can see, doing the right thing is crucial for our happiness on earth. And ultimately, God has promised us a place in heaven for everyone who does their best to do the right thing. So this is one of the few sessions where, if possible, I would really like you to watch both the videos, if you can, please. And I've tried to make them as straightforward and easy to follow as possible. In the first half of this video, we're gonna look at why does God give us rules? Is following God's rules worth it? And how do those rules work? And then in the second part of the video, we'll begin with a very brief look at how God's rules relate to sin. We'll explore a bit about what love is. And then finally, we'll end the video with a look at what Jesus considered to be the greatest commandment. Then in the second video, I will summarise some of the most important other guidelines that God has given us for doing his will. So we'll look at the Beatitudes, the Ten Commandments, a brief look at the precepts of the Catholic Church, and then finally we'll look very briefly at some challenges to doing the right thing. So let's begin with why does God give us rules or guidelines? I think there are four main reasons. There are probably more, but I'll just focus on, on four. I think the first is very simple, and I think it's the most important. God gives us rules because he loves us and he wants the best for us. And that's both while we're here on earth, but more importantly, so that we can be united with him in heaven forever. And it's really important that these rules are not because God wants to control us or spoil our fun or make us boring. On the contrary, God wants us to be fully alive and happy on earth, and he wants to join us in heaven. The second reason why God gives us rules, I think, is that God wants us to help him build up his kingdom, and that's here on earth. And so God's given every single one of us our own unique mission. It's our own way of kind of doing that. And building up our ki God's kingdom simply means making the world a better place, a world that's more full of love. And so following God's rules can help us to fulfill our mission and build up his kingdom. And God's kingdom, another way of saying that is the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of love. A third reason I think God gives us rules is because he wants to guide us. He wants to reveal his will for our lives. And that's so that his loving plan, and it's always a loving plan, can unfold both for ourselves and the people around us. But unfortunately, our desires, what we want, is often in conflict with what God wants. And so that brings us to our fourth and last reason. God gives us rules because he wants us to be free. So life presents us with this never ending series of choices and God's given us two incredible gifts to navigate these choices, intelligence and free will. 
So free will, quite simply, is just our freedom to make choices or decisions. And our intelligence can help us make good choices. But intelligence alone is not enough. God gives us rules because he wants us to be free. And what that means is free to make the best possible choices. Because ultimately, our choices and our decisions influence our actions. And so I want to share with you now two quotes that I think really highlight to me the importance of doing the right thing and why I think this session is so important. Both of these quotes are from Catholic priests who post a lot of videos on YouTube. And I think both of these quotes are really powerful. So here's the first one it's from Father Patrick Cahill. No one got into heaven on the basis of what they knew. We get into heaven on the basis of what we do. And here's another really pithy, brief quote. Decisions determine destiny from Father Mike Schmitz. I think both these quotes are basically saying that Jesus says what we do here on earth determines how our lives will unfold and whether or not there is a place for us in heaven. And God's promised all of us a place in heaven if we do our best to follow his will, follow his rules and guidelines. Probably one of the most important principles I'd like you to try and take away from this session is the idea that all of God's laws and rules are designed for one reason and one reason only, and that is to promote love. So that's love for God, love for our neighbour, love for ourselves and love for the planet. And so it won't surprise you to learn that all of Jesus' teaching and advice when it came to rules and following God's laws can be boiled down to just one word, love. When Jesus was asked, which is the greatest commandment? His reply was, love your God with all your mind, all your soul and all your strength and then love your neighbor as yourself. And you can find that quote in the Gospel of Matthew. And um, Jesus was taking those words from the Old Testament books of Deuteronomy and Leviticus. And we'll return to that quote a little bit later in this video. So having seen that love is really at the heart of why God gives us rules, a key question to ask is, what is love? So Jesus said, this is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. You are my friends if you do what I command you. The love that Jesus wants us to show each other is very different from the idea of love that the world commonly imagines love to be. So Jesus wasn't talking about romantic love. Bishop Robert Barron is another Catholic priest who posts a lot of videos on YouTube and his work has really influenced my thinking a lot. And he describes the love that Jesus was talking about like this. Love is willing the good of the other as other. So I would say that means always giving more than you get back. Or to put it another way, it's basically a kind of bad deal in the eyes of the world, but it's a great deal as far as God is concerned. For if you are gi giving more than you get back, the chances are that you're making a sacrifice. And we'll say a bit more about this kind of later in, in the video, because true love and successful relationships always involve sacrifice. And that means putting what God or other people want above what you want. Another important point I think that relates to all of this is that real love is not just a, a feeling. Love is an action. And again, this is a very different idea from the idea of romantic love. In fact, often real love does not feel good at times. So when a parent gets up, for example, in the middle of the night because their child is crying or unwell, they're not doing that because it feels good. They're doing it because they love. They're doing it because they're willing the good of the other. They're giving more than they can get back. 
And so loving like this is definitely not easy, but God promises to help us. And the sacraments of the Catholic Church are a key way that God helps us to love like this. And we'll talk more about those in our next and future sessions. So let's move on to how do God's rules actually work? Well, I think there are many possible analogies that I could give you, um, but here's one that I think works fairly well. Let's see what you think. I like to think of God's commands or God's rules as a bit like the lights on an airport runway at night. So without them, we just can't see clearly enough. We can't make the best decisions about what we should do or to stick with the kind of analogy, we just don't know how to make sure that our plane can land safely or smoothly. And each one of us is a pilot in our own plane and each of us is completely free to ignore those lights and land our plane wherever we like. But ignoring those lights will take us away from the path that God wants us to travel on. And ignoring God's path usually means that we're going to act in a way that's going to be selfish. And if we do that, it's going to mean there's a greater chance that we'll be reducing love or potentially even increasing hurt or harm or pain. And that could be now in the present moment or in the future and no matter how hard we try and avoid those things when we're not following god's laws when we should the chances are those things will happen another way of putting that is that ignoring god's rules ignoring god's path results in sin so basically God's path following his rules will always be the route that promotes the most love, the most happiness and the most well-being in every possible situation. And so this is one of the most important principles that I want you to take away from this session. Doing what God wants will always be the right decision no matter what the circumstances. And that's no matter how impossible it might seem or how much you might want to do something else. And it will always be the option that brings the most happiness and well-being available in that particular situation or circumstance. So let's kind of change direction a little bit. So how, let's talk a little bit about sin and how it relates to God's rules. So sin is not really a word that many of us like, but I think it's a very important concept for us to understand. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about sin in this session because I think it would be better for us to explore it properly in our next session where we look at the sacrament of reconciliation. And that's also known as the sacrament of confession. But let me just mention something about it very briefly here. So every time we don't follow God's rules, every time we don't take opportunities to do the right thing, effectively what we're doing is rejecting God and his love. We're saying that we can manage without God. And this creates distance between God and us. And so sin, if you try and summarise it, is kind of like our rejection of God and love and the damage it does to our relationships with him and the people around us. So this raises kind of two questions. I think the first is, how should we respond when other people do not do the right thing? And the answer very simply is with love. This means showing mercy, compassion, patience, and forgiveness. And so in the, our Father, we pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Practically, this also means not being judgmental or intolerant or holding grudges. And all of these things can be really hard to do, particularly if people hurt us or offend us in very 
powerful ways. But I think one of Jesus's most famous parables was this parable of the prodigal son. And that's the picture that you can see on the slide. And we'll talk more about this parable in the next session when we look at the sacrament of reconciliation. And so what should we do if we break God's rules? Well, none of us are perfect and all of us make mistakes. And so God has given this, um, us this kind of amazing gift of the sacrament of confession. So if we break God's rules, we should go to confession as soon as we can and as often as we can. And obviously that's very difficult to do at the moment during the pandemic. But whenever we go to confession, we receive God's love and his mercy and forgiveness and any of the sins that we have committed are completely wiped clean. They're forgotten about by God. And this is a point that I think a lot of people find really surprising and I certainly did when I first came across it. There is absolutely no sin that God will not forgive if we're truly sorry and we try our best not to repeat it. But as I say, we'll talk more about all of this in our next session, which will be about the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So let's think about something else. Is following God's rules worth it? Jesus and the Catholic Church would say a very definite yes and without any hesitation. So... Why is that? Well, let me, let me start by asking you two questions. How can we show God that we love him? Or to put it another way, how does God know that we love him? And I think the answer is in the title of this slide. Following God's rules is one of the most powerful ways of expressing our love for him. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And this is stated in different ways many times in the Bible. And so I'm not going to read all of these quotes out, but they're in your handouts if you want to have a look at them. Here's the first one, and then I've put a few on the next slide. But I think God's, following God's rules brings us lots of other benefits as well. Um, a lot of them are linked to the idea that following God's rules brings us freedom. It gives us freedom to become the very best version of ourselves. It helps us to become as free as we could happily be, uh, sorry, as happy as we could possibly be. Following God's rules gives us freedom from many sources of pain or suffering. From, helps us to know what's right and wrong and what God values. It also gives us freedom to demonstrate our love for God and for other people. It allows God's plan to unfold in our lives. It helps increase our faith. And finally, as we've said before, following God's rules helps us get to heaven where we can be united with him forever. But having said all of that, whenever we follow one of God's rules, it usually comes at a cost to us. Now that cost might mean that we have to either do something we don't want to do. So it might be helping out at home when you'd rather be playing on your PlayStation. Or it might mean that we can't do something that we really want to do. So it might mean not having a lion on a Sunday morning because we have to go to mass. But if we follow God's rules as best we can for our whole lives and you add up all of those costs, ultimately, what we're giving away is really of far less value than what we receive. And that's because if you factor in how happy we can be on earth, as well as the happiness that we would get from being with God in heaven for eternity. So it's quite hard to kind of get our heads around this concept. So let me try and illustrate it with a quick story. So imagine, imagine you're going shopping one day and you're walking down the high street, uh, could be Mill Hill Broadway or any other kind of street. 
Oxford Street, whatever, suddenly you get a phone call from an unknown number and you kind of take the call. And extraordinary, like absolutely extraordinarily, it's, it's a billionaire. So you've got no idea how this person got your number. And then this person says to you, can I ask you a big favor? My daughter is in the shop a few doors away from where you are now and she hasn't got any money. So she really wants to have a 10p suite. Would you be able to buy her one of those suites, please? Now you're obviously in a state of shock, like who is this person? How did they get your number? I mean, it could be Bill Gates, it could be, you know, imagine just what one of those billionaires. And you're not really sure what to say. But before you get the chance to say anything, the billionaire says to you, and if you could buy her one of those 10p suites, I will give you a reward. And so you ask, well, what is the reward? And the billionaire replies, I will give you 10 billion pounds. And, you know, you could say all of this sounds kind of completely crazy, but that is the kind of love and generosity that God is offering us by inviting us to follow his rules. What God is promising us if we follow his rules as best we can has far more value than money and it's much more valuable than even 10 billion pounds. And in case you're not sure how big a sum of money we're talking about, a billion pounds is actually a thousand million and that's basically 10 with 10 zeros after it. And so I just want to very quickly just show you a quote that highlights, I think, some of this generosity, this kind of generosity that God is offering us. To me, this quote suggests that whenever we leave what's comfortable or familiar, our families, our homes, our friends, even for just an hour a week to do something good for God, God will reward us with good things that far exceed whatever good we might do. And obviously, the more we can give God of our time, our talents, our treasure, the more we will receive. And the parable of the talents is another really good example of this idea in the Bible. So we're nearing the end of this first video now, and there are just two things I want to say um, before we finish. I, firstly, I want to try and introduce you to some of the most important rules and guidelines that God has given us to help us do the right thing. So there are four main sets of rules I want to share with you in this video and the next. I'd like to talk about the greatest commandment, the Beatitudes, the Ten Commandments and the precepts of the church. But in this video, I'm only going to talk about the first one, the greatest commandment, and I'll try and tackle the other three in the second video. And in case you're curious about where they come from, the first three are from the Bible. And the last one is from a combination of sacred tradition and the magisterium. And that's the teaching authority of the church. And I talked about that in my second video on the Bible. So if you're interested, you can have a look at your handouts or have a look at that video. So we've already talked a bit about the greatest commandment earlier in this video, and we've also talked about it before on the course. So let me just show you it again. Now, when we were talking about the five keys to faith, I explained that the cross can help us remember those five keys and also the greatest commandment. And it can help us remember the greatest commandment because the upright beam of the cross helps us to remember the first part. So that's the bit in purple. And the horizontal beam helps us to remember the second part. And that's the bit in blue. And you can see the purple bit comes from the book of Deuteronomy and the blue bit comes from the book of Leviticus. And you can find them both in the Gospel of Matthew. Now the five keys to faith 
that I've introduced you to throughout this course all help us live out the greatest commandment. All five of them help us demonstrate our love for God and sacrifice and service help us demonstrate our love for our neighbour as well. And so we'll talk more about service when we do our final session on the course, which is called Living My Confirmation. But in the rest of this video, I just want to say a little bit about what I mean by sacrifice in this context. So when I use the word sacrifice, I'm using it much more broadly than just giving something up like you would for Lent. Sacrifice is really being open to doing God's will. It's the first step before doing any of the five keys and it's involved, I think, to varying degrees in all of them. Another way of putting that is that sacrifice is putting what God wants or what other people need ahead of what we want or what we need. It doesn't have to mean giving things up or not doing things. It can also mean doing positive things or giving things to people that are positive. Every time we keep the commandments or follow God's teachings, all the teachings of the church, we are probably being invited to make some kind of sacrifice. And as we said earlier, real love will always involve some kind of sacrifice. Just a quick recap on something we've said in previous sessions. All these five keys are really powerfully related. And effectively what that means is that the more you use each one, the easier it will be to use any of the others. And as we've said before, mass is the most powerful key to increasing our faith. And we will have a session on the mass very shortly. Now, just in case you were wondering in this commandment, who is my neighbor? I think the image on this slide highlights it really well. Jesus says our neighbor is everyone that we meet in our day-to-day -day lives, no matter how different or how similar they might be to us. The very last thing I want to say in this video is that everything the Catholic Church does has the aim of helping us live out this greatest commandment from Jesus. This especially refers to sacraments, and we'll talk more about them in our next session. But it also includes everyone who is in the church, and that's the people you might expect, like priests and nuns and deacons, ministers of the Eucharist, catechists, but it also includes everyone else. So all of us, you know, you, your parents, your friends, your neighbours, all of us together are trying to work together to live out this commandment. So let me give you a very quick recap of everything we've talked about in this video. So God gives us rules because he loves us and he wants the best for us. And God's commands are there to guide us and help us make the right choices. God promises us that following his rules will bring us the greatest possible happiness on earth. And ultimately, Following those rules will give us the greatest possible reward, which is eternal happiness with him in heaven. And finally, we get into heaven on the basis of what we do, not what we know. So our decisions determine our destiny. So thank you for joining to watch this first video on doing the right thing. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. In the second video, I'm going to explore the topic in a bit more detail and it would be really great if you could join me.